All right. Uh, let me see. Double mix that one. Three, two, one, live and go. Well, uh, that's got to get fixed too. What's over that? Oh, that's what that is. That's why that's like that. Okie doke. So, hey now, you're an all star. Get your game on. Go play. What's up, party people? Clem Hawkins here. Just a random live stream. Expecting very little. But, A, if I don't use this thing, it tends to hurt uh, other times. Uh, B, uh, it does seem to help a little bit. I've been dealing with a, either a punctured eardrum, fra uh, ear problem, swelling, or ear infection, or I don't know. Uh, I got bath water in it, and I stupidly, in a semi-panic, not really a panic, just a nonsensical rush to flush it out with olive oil. And I squished that around somehow thinking, oh, olive oil will be great because I know you can use it to um, soften and or help remove or d deteriorate like uh, earwax if it ever like, gets in a lump or clogs your ear. Um, but anyway, uh, doing this with the awareness that... Uh, well, the, the first thought was I wanted to get a new channel. Um, the other thought was I want to be able to uh, not feel like I'm talking to a void, but I go to a void only when I'm trying to avoid realities especially those that i have no control over um that's way darker than i like now because i just moved i'm noticing that there's quite a delay uh i'm not i think i have the windows closed uh, i have a lot of and especially even more so recently really loud disrespectful neighbors um that uh, otherwise seem to feel whoever breaks the rules makes the rules. And I started getting lease violations because I was following my lease. In my lease, I'm supposed to report problems or violations, especially those that involve me. I do so. The guy says, oh, if it makes you unsafe, then you got to call the police. I'm like, well, if you dealt with it before I had to call the police, I wouldn't have to call the police. Now, would I? But they wouldn't deal with it. Now, when I email them, uh, I'm told, I'm responded, and, and I email them things like, bro, I tried to leave a while ago. I thought you were a different guy. Obviously, you're just another one of her watchdogs, and by her, I mean Felicia, the manager lady that it's been a ghetto ever since she took over the job. She keeps getting promotions, and she, how, how or why anyone would stay in the position she's at while everyone around her goes other places, to me, only just points out what seems to be an obvious situation, but, uh, Life is life, and sometimes life just guides you where to go. And uh, whether I like my view or not, um, doesn't really matter. More importantly, I need to avoid where I don't want to go, and that's back on the streets. Um, I've already, and by already, I mean over the past 18 to 24 months, but even back then, I mean... You have to comprehend the reality of what I've dealt with. It, it was maybe a year and a half ago, this neighbor over here, uh, I guess you'd call it a middle-aged woman, uh, 
goes through guys like I go through pouches of tobacco, like one every couple of three days. Um, and I'm not to judge slutty or dysfunctional people that live that way. And I don't know, I assume she's a stripper or has some other type of um, job where she can uh, regularly lure strange people to her apartment have them live there for a day or a couple of three or a week every so often one lasts maybe a month but that was only like twice in the last five years anyway she followed me through two subdivisions like from the corner store uh yelling at the top of her lungs that i of all people which is hilarious to begin with was a racist and that she felt i deserved to die and she was doing it with one of her more recent, at that time, boyfriends uh, in order to promote herself in front of him as a very uh, outspoken anti-racist person. She's the kind of person that uses opposite discrimination against people to make them do what she wants them to do. If you don't do what I say, it's because you're a racist. It's like... No, it's because you're a lying, thieving cunt. It has nothing to do with what color your skin is. Um, I don't call the place a ghetto because it's black. I've lived in ghettos most of, a lot of my life. And almost always, black people were not generally the most populous of the neighborhood. Uh, I remember Elmwood Court. I don't remember it being a lot of black and or whites i just remember kids and it was only later that i realized a lot of them may or that i was ignorant of race at the time and my first job in life i uh, worked at uh, long john silvers for about seven days maybe maybe a week i'm not exactly sure i remember I feel like I remember the day that I was like, fuck it. Um, but long and the short of it, I got a job as a breakdance instructor. And uh, lots of weird things happened as a result of me saying, fuck it. You know, it's like I lost my job at the... At the fry place you know the guy kept telling me that he wasn't going to put me as a fry cook and he put me as a fry cook and that was cool later like 30 years later in life i understood how to operate and the principles around filtering grease so when i got it uh, exposed or involved around uh, biodiesel type of stuff in the early 2000s um that information kind of came in handy, but otherwise, uh, it was a reminder that life pays you the most or treats you the best when you do what life suggests. And another perfect example of when really bad, what I thought was bad news became good news was, uh, essentially being disowned by my dad when I was 30, uh, Losing my job, my apartment, uh, my all my friends, and all because one guy that I trusted either planned on or allowed someone to cheat me. But as things happen, you didn't. You rarely learn. It. If you don't investigate, you won't find out. And if you do investigate, you may find out. Uh, like it or not, people are just that way. Um, but you know, it led to an adventure of a lifetime, 20 years plus on the road. Uh, I got to do a lot of stuff. A lot of people never got to do. Um, it's not often recently, and maybe that's part of why life is trying to force my hand to get me out of my apartment. Um. I'm just trying to avoid being homeless again. So I did what only seemed to be the smartest thing. I reached out to everybody related to homeless advocacy. Nobody seemed to be, have any guidance on who to call. 
or what to do when I'm essentially being discriminated against and blackballed by the leasing company, which are county uh, employees. And the reason that they're threatening me is because I essentially said, you're not fucking doing your job. And if somebody's not paying attention to it, no sense in me telling you, you ain't doing your job because everybody else fucking knows you ain't doing your job. I mean, there's been lights out on the stairwell for almost three months. Like the guy across the hall decided he's going to make a decision on what should or shouldn't exist. So I think what he did was you can see there's scrapes where a screwdriver tip flathead was used to open the curtain cover. I don't know if he opened it and cut the wires or all I know is I've reported it numerous times. Whenever I report the lights out, they say, oh, you're threatening me. That's a lease violation. I'm like, dude, you're not doing your job. I said I've been trying to leave. All I want is a one-year lease. That's all I said. I can't get this shit done. I need a one-year lease. When are you going to give me a month-to-month lease? Because the one-year lease that I signed in, like, the summer, something was wrong with it. Now, since day one, every single time, because I've had these experiences before, I've learned these things. You have to make them make you fill it out. Why? Because when it comes back filled out wrong, you are not at fault. I've been diligent about not being at fault, paying my rent, doing exactly what I was told. Two years ago or so, maybe longer, I was hounded. I had notes. I still got them. I had notes on my door for like three months. Don't pay your rent this month. It's overdue. Don't pay your rent. You're ahead. You're ahead. You're ahead. Well, what's wrong with that? That should be a good thing. You should be saying, thanks, we'll give you a bonus so you don't have to because you're awesome. But that didn't happen. I got, don't pay. So I went to the office and I said, are you sure? They said, yes, we're sure. I said, put it in writing. I think they did. I didn't pay. Uh, they put a eviction notice on my door, threatened to throw me out, um, all without warning, all because I did exactly what they said. So I realized that I was on the blackball list and I quit complaining, moved everything from my front room where I was essentially uh, enjoying as a one bedroom studio apartment. You know, this my bedroom, that my living room, front room, nice view, loud fucking hallway, disrespectful neighbors, slamming doors any time of the day or night. One guy, Jed, he's actually a nice guy and considerate, but he... uh, He's got Tourette's or some extreme mental dysfunction where he will yell at the top of his lungs from his apartment through the hall, down the stairs, down the sidewalk, down the sidewalk to the leasing office, back to the sidewalk, around the um, circle, to the dumpster, walk down the thing, back up the stairs to his apartment, shuts his door. He yells at the top of his voice the whole fucking time, and he'll do two or three laps. And that's been um, every week for sure, more than common, almost every night. You complain about it, I'm sorry you're in lease violation. But I don't have anybody to complain when I complain. How is it when I complain, I get violated against? You see, like I had a situation where I had bought these bread trucks from this one guy who owned the company, and this other guy bought the company, but the trucks were still on the property. So the other guy told his mechanic, take the motor out of that because he works. He got it fixed, so take it now while he's not here. They took it, knowing I couldn't prove that they took it, uh, and left me with no uh, motor, like, it was a Cummins diesel. It was like a $2,000, $3,000 motor, just alone. Uh, but I found the guy, told him that the guy stole from me that I was had report was a report going to report it. So I went to this new house that I had just rented or whatever was renting to fix up. Um and the guy and his buddy comes over and attacks me, starts throwing huge-ass fucking boulders at me. Uh, I call the police. The police uh, finally come. Turns out they called the police before I did because they planned on jumping me. So I was the one that got the ticket. 
right about that same time in Santa Fe, uh, I had an apartment. It was crack filled, like dealers going in and out all the fucking time. In and the biggest problem was my apartment was right in line with the driveway. So every five minutes, there's another set of headlights coming in. You know, flash, door slam, door slam, go service the customer, car leaves, guy comes back, door slam, door slam. Uh, not a couple minutes later, another car, like repeat. So uh, long and the short of it, all of those drug dealers essentially told the landlord, if you kick us or if you don't kick him out, uh, we're all going to stay here and not pay, which is... At that point, I think it was seven times. Most places will let you stay three months, so that would be like 21 months of rent that they would be limited. All, and they went. I I actually it's the last time I cut my hair because I went to I shaved my head before I went to the court. Mr. Richard was there, Mr. Uh, Bruce was there, Mr. Elvis was there. Um, but it didn't work. And then I got an apartment and that kind of worked. And then similar thing happened. Chose, I don't know. I didn't like this neighbor girl. It's not like I didn't like her. It's just, I was not romantically interested in her and she took offense to that. And so she made it a point to get me evicted or throw, well, she just made it so the landlord decided he wasn't going to rent to me because if he did, she wouldn't sleep with me with him anymore. Uh, you know, she paid her rent with sex, I think, and uh, basically said, "I'm, I'll start paying you cash if you don't kick him out." You know, people monkeys are strange like that, and you know that was my. I'd gotten off the streets after about eight. Eight or ten years, maybe. If math sort of serves correctly, I had uh, eight or ten solid years, possibly. Then an apartment for three to six months. Then an apartment for one year solid. Uh, then homeless again from, what, 2011 or 12 all the way through 2019 December basically 2020 when I got this place and I don't know if this will be the place that I just put stuff um, I used to try to manipulate it so I wasn't talking into the void and understanding like I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have potentially ten computers that I could connect to the internet through the Wi Fi and pretend I have ten viewers. But I ain't going to bother with that. Um, I'm not sure where I saw that, but I saw that. It was probably that one. I'm partly test driving this stuff. Also, I'm getting to the point where <sighs> easiest way to put it outside of I'm going to take a quick couple of seconds here and go start making some coffee so I can keep talking. Uh, oh, I have iced tea waiting. It's cold. Uh, I'll just get that. Let me see. So anyway. I guess part of this is so um, together to better document stuff. Um, also, it has to do with reject.
objecting or revolting against the system by selecting the non-participation option. Essentially what that means is I remove myself from almost all social media with minimal exceptions to Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I don't know. At some point, I considered it <coughs> One of my uh, medical conditions is, I guess it's called emphysema. <coughs> I would say even as a very, very very, I don't even know, like, uh, it's extremely rare that I finish a complete cigarette unless I leave my apartment. And when I leave my apartment, it's normally, uh, unless it's to the tobacco store or the weed store, uh, it's normally just around the block of some nature, just out while I smoke a cigarette. Um, a lot of times what I'll do because it's convenient. I thought I had done it this time, but I guess I didn't. Because uh, I did do my last for a while walk outside today. Um, I called to set a doctor's appointment and was told uh, December 10th is the next available something. Uh, which means... Not only am I trying to find a new place to live, I'm trying to find a new primary caregiver. Uh, during the chaos, I later understood how I made the mistake, but I think sometimes we... I know for a fact that our brains are more functional and attentive than we all give it credit for. Meaning that, um, like, I think it's the reason why a lot of people function exceptionally well in a panic situation. Maybe it's adrenaline, maybe it's other things. But, to me, I see it. Sorry, I'm dealing with an extremely crusty ear. Uh. I got what I thought was an ear infection. Well, I don't know if I already told you. Uh, I got bath water in my ear. And because I know I'm prone to swimmer's ear, meaning that little canal to my ear tends to be really narrow or funky in that it will like hold water in there and it can get infected. So, in a rush, I put olive oil in there because I didn't have any uh, rubbing alcohol. Um, I do now. I bought rubbing alcohol and hydrogen peroxide. And I think I got all my prescriptions for a month, which is good since I can't even go see the doctor for a month anyway. Even, And I'm not... Uh, I'm aware of my lack of functionality in that. Uh, oh, wow. Sorry. I just totally, totally ruined all of that. I guess that's why, huh? Oh, and there's also a light setting on there, too. I'm going to push this button and see what it does. Hopefully I can do it without this crashing. That's not it. That's not it. Oh, it could be, but... Oh, that is it. I 
I'm just going through these until that that looks as close to as the same. I don't know what setting it is, but it seems a little better. So yeah, this is my Boulder live stream. Uh, the beginning of the void. At some point, I don't know how I'll do it, but I'll get a clip. I'll put something together. Uh, I've taken myself off of almost all other social media. I do have my own website. I, for whatever reason, still have it linked as its original name, although I stupidly continue to pay a month or a yearly fee to rent the name even though I'm not using it uh, and uh, life has changed to a point where the name really doesn't fit anything anyway uh, I tried yesterday or day before to reinstall re I, uh, at some point, I did ADHD TV podcasts, um, but that floundered, and then I tried to log into that account and had difficulty. Um, so at this point, it kind of doesn't matter in that unless it's some random, which, again, I'm aware that there are ways to manipulate to be seen and, and picked up by algorithms. Uh, like if I put in the title there, anything that might be trending you know what i'm saying in the title like see what's trending immediately do a video on that and you know constantly keep refreshing that that might draw some subscribers and then once you get subscribers you know then people will watch as far as i'm concerned anything i've done and that's a lot of different stuff different places it's so much I have a difficult time keeping track of, but I probably have seven or eight channels just to this user alone, as well as, gosh, I probably got, well, I know I have at least, I probably want to say 10 active Gmail accounts, mostly because I got, uh, during COVID, I got hooked up with this uh, hooked up, hooked on, uh, overly obsessive with, I know, it's just one of those things that, like it or not, right, wrong, or indifferent, until this chunk is not hanging there, it's going to bother me. Anyway. I had an earplug in there to make it kind of feel normal, but now I'm trying to, well, I've been trying to get it to dry out. I'm glad that I, uh, it's funny, I was stressing in the beginning of the week for not calling the doctor. And then when I finally did, I almost half opened. Not really, but I mean almost. Um... The fact that it's a month out suggests uh, I need to find better alternatives. But to me, all of the things kind of lend themselves to believing I'm, I be leaving, <laughs> uh, like it or not, you know. And I'm currently in a situation my last investment was this amp for a hundred bucks uh, I got this guitar the electric in the fender case it's not a fender but it's there and that's my dad's guitar uh, that my step monster helped me pick up asked me to help pick out which is weird because 
I'm almost positive I thought I got a Yamaha. That's an Alvarez, but that's a Yamaha. And that's that's like a shorter version of Woody's uh Willie's Woody's. Guitar Trigger, which I think is kind of interesting because the first time I ever heard some, it was my mom, use a car's name, use a name for a car as like, a, she named her car Trigger after the same reason that Willie named his guitar Trigger after Roy Rogers' horse. Uh... I only partly remember that, and I remember, I don't remember, I could probably figure out what kind of car it was, um, but it wasn't a very good car, it was like a 50s, 60s year, because when, when it happened was probably 71 or 70, something like that, but I remember the car had broke down. And my grandfather had to come out and he used a rope to tie a spare tire without the rim onto his bumper so he could safely, gently push my mom's car down the road to their house. Because at the time my mom was, was the first house I remember too, it was a trailer um, and weird because my sister ended up later living in that trailer, renting it. And then my mom ended up renting it, living in it. Um, mostly when I, when I, when I was that age, two, two thirds or more of the peop of the residents of the lane, and this is way out in the sticks right next to the one of the Kentucky lakes, Bar Barkley Lake, or some, one of the lakes. Um, might have even been Kentucky Lake. Uh, uh, I keep forgetting that my iced tea, I put... Um, vitamin C in there uh, <clears throat> so it's tart and then I I, I, don't, I know it's weird I tried to make uh, non unsweetened peach tea so I used peach juice from these little peach buckets that I get it's kind of the only that and bananas are the only fruit I get but I'm learning to appropriately ration food based on a what all I can think of is a simplified regiment I drink a lot of coffee I essentially live on coffee and non-dairy creamer uh, very rarely like I might average one of these every two days of water maybe I understand it's probably not a lot but I do what I can do but <laughs> since I've been 20 probably I've been I guess a coffee addict in that I regularly have joked if there wasn't water in coffee I'd probably be a dust ball um, because that's where I'm sure I get 90% of any of the water that's in my system. And, you know, philosophically speaking, oh, I just had an interesting thought. I realized I could record a, a, a podcast, if that's what this is going to be. Um... wait however long it takes a day or whatever for it to generate the text-to-speech 
then I can get the text to speech, remove the timestamps, copy it all, take it to the Gemini AI, paste it, ask for a summary, get a summary, ask for if that's a video script, what are the best hashtags, get the hashtags, put it in the video. It's like uh, attracting, figuring out how to attract a crowd when you're standing in a void so you can then leave, hence avoiding them. It's like something that I wrote. It was a poem, poetry. I don't know what, you, I'm not sure. It's probably, call it poetry for lack of a better shoe brand. Um, when you write poetry or you're a writer of any type, it's essentially like you're creating a script that you assume will be read perfectly because of punctuation and phrasing and etc. Word choice, um, which is in essence the act of the craft, right? With the process of the writing. But the point is, they don't take the stage until they leave, meaning they are never present when the performance happens with the exception of either them hearing or reading what they wrote. Um, a lot, how would I put it? I'd be willing to bet most people read silently, which means they gather and gain the information without verbally using this device um, the difficulty of isolating one's self completely even without a small void window to avoid <laughs> get it I'm gonna call it a void because people avoid it anyway but because it's it's I can't, somebody said something about screaming into the void. Uh, I think when I remember it, it was Shane Gillis. And uh, he was talking about his relatives or people from where he grew up on Twitter with zero followers tweeting things as if they are screaming into a void. Now, I'm aware that If a platform is designed for 20 to 30 minutes of daily engagement, it seems unlikely any of them will be present when it's perceived. However, as that happened, people seemed to feed on it, and then it just became a feeding frenzy for those kinds of people and not for anything organic or natural. So I figure the easiest way to do it organic and natural is to do it as naturally as I would do it in an organic of a nature as possible with what I have available. And uh, the feeling of accomplishment that comes from it is having attempted similar aspects of it in the past with different motivations, most all of which floundered and failed. And I got that same exact feeling when I, I sent an email telling the guy that the problems continue to exist. Excuse me, I just farted hugely right into the microphone. Good thing that's not a smell a phone because you would be smelling it. I'm going to do my best to avoid doing that. Check on the coffee.
So I just had a funny thought. If you move to the rhythm of music, it's a dance, right? And if you do that in a void, get it? It's void dance. A void dance. Now, I guess part of the reality is um, I almost want to believe, I want to feel that in the past when I had positive results, it was because I was positively using this specifically, the act of speaking. If everything we say, think, feel, or do exists somehow, some way, and what we talk about is more likely to happen than not to happen, it's better to talk about good things and bad things. And it's like when I, when I first learned this, I reprogrammed myself. So instead of saying, uh, instead of damning things in the name of God, I, I would say, God bless it. And if I accidentally said the one, I would say the other multiple times as a goofy type of way to make up for it. So instead of saying, you know, some expletive that expressed negative emotion, I would force myself to use my brain to instead access the creative part of my brain to come up with a funnier way of saying it and that's in a lot of ways how comedy helps me on a daily basis through my whole life it's like i don't think of myself anymore as a comedian because i can stand up and be funny on cue like a monkey uh i just consider myself how i consider myself and as far as I have been able to decipher in life, there really isn't a single role I can pick in life still that kind of fits me with maybe the exception of podcast or talk show host because um, it's not that I like to talk as much as when I have talked to other people in the past with the positive intention of being helpful, I was helped more than they were helped. Almost always. Because I listen to what I say as divine guidance, not personal opinion. Uh, and it's just a trick that I learned in life that most of the time, when God wants me to fix me, he sends me somebody so they have the same problems I have so I can see it in me. And I noticed it earlier, like younger, like I was 20 maybe, but people that said uh, would regularly curse things in God's name had regularly bad luck. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you accidentally hit your thumb on with the net, with the whatever, you know, the cartoon. Uh, example of an oops that hurts whether you stub your toe or you slip on a banana peel or whatever the clowny thing for a fuck up is that happens uh, generally the idea would be you know uh, keep an eye out for banana peels um, and that's been kind of a strong motivator in life for me uh, it's about 4 16 so I'm gonna sign I'm gonna do something different I'm going to end a live stream podcast at 420. In the past, a lot of times I've started them on there. So uh, I just started this random and I got coffee going and I'm going to try to figure out some other things to accomplish today. So uh, it might be sleep. It might be rest. It might be restringing a guitar or two. No, I only have one left. I did all, I did all the strings I want on that one. Um, but, uh, It probably would behoove me to 
come up with some sort of daily schedule. Um, I like, I don't know, I've, I've been trying to find the umbrella of all things considered to put everything else under. And initially I did that as Dream Space Productions, which I will probably revert back to. Uh, mostly because I'm aware that none of the subscription, if I had a thousand subscriptions over every channel I've ever had on YouTube that were not me or gimmicks, I'd be surprised. Um, the one place I could put it is that place where I got people that um, saw the log in, log out. Uh, and again, that was just, I put it up there because it was useful to me. Because I wanted something to start all my videos with. And I was like, oh, I wanted this. It didn't exist. So I found a TV being turned off. And then I used an editor to flip it. And then I posted it just so I had a place... At the time, I could still, like, download directly, like, whether it would be YouTube or um, Facebook or whatever. A couple years ago, there was an extension for Fire, at least Firefox, that you could just click it and it would download a copy of whatever it was on there. It's since gotten really challenging and difficult. I think it's because somebody has this notion that there should be ownership to intellectual property when it comes to entertainment. Uh, it seems really silly to me. But then again, it seems really silly to me that you have to pay to get less ads because it's the people who can afford to pay that can afford the stuff that the ads are for. So kind of says it's for the exact opposite reason to make everyone who can't afford to not see ads feel bad and look at all the stuff they can't afford while they're feeling bad it's sad but it's 420 now 419 with 20 seconds so i got 40 seconds to figure out a good close out wind down um when and if i get organized to a point that i have a scene collection and introduction and uh, music and all of that we'll figure it out uh in the meantime it's almost 420 420 45 so uh i'm gonna call it that get my coffee uh, get this third or second or next part of my day going and call it peace love you family probably have a few seconds actually i have a minute or three that i could remove from it because overall i only need a total of oh wait i don't even know how long it's been 49 